Today, we're going to be ranking the greatest current point guard from every team in the NBA. And within the next couple of weeks, we're going to have a ranking video like this for every position. Now, I know a while back I started doing this for the all-time best from every team, but I never finished it. But we're going to finish this one with the current players this time, and then one day maybe we'll finish off those all-time videos. But as for this video, things start out a little rough because not every team has a great point guard, but I promise it gets better, so let's get started. Number 30. The Suns with Elia Kobo. Next. Number 29. The Knicks with Trey Burke. The Knicks curse of not having a good point guard continues. Number 28. The Magic with DJ Augustine. As a matter of fact, it looks like Orlando has the same curse. They haven't had a good point guard since Penny Hardaway, unless we're counting Jameer Nelson, but still. Number 27. The Bulls with Chris Dunn. Chris Dunn was taken 5th overall in the 2016 draft and hasn't made too much of an impact so far and I don't know if I can see him becoming much more than a decent point guard in the NBA, but we'll see. Number 26, the Cavs with George Hill. Alright, I know I said the beginning of this list was going to be a little rough, but I don't know if you knew it was going to be this rough. I'm sure the Cavs would have preferred to have Colin Sexton in this spot, but unfortunately he doesn't know how to play. Number 25, the Pelicans with Alfred Payton. I've expected Alfred Payton's role on the Pelicans to be similar to how Rondo's was last year, and it's looked pretty close to that so far. Payton's not really great at any one thing, but he's decent at a little bit of everything. 24, the Clippers with Patrick Beverly. Beverly only doesn't rank last in the league because of his defense. Besides that though, on offense he's not a good player at all. So far as a Clippers starting point guard, he's averaging 5 points on 31% from the field and 25% from 3. Oh, and don't forget, 4 assists a game. 23, the Pacers with Darren Collison. Now I really thought and hoped this season that the Pacers were going to give Tyreek Evans a shot to be their starting point guard. And I think that would have been great for the both of them, but instead they've kept Collison, who's only averaging 8 points and 4 assists a game. I'm sure that Tyreek Evans could do better than that. 22, the Lakers with Lonzo Ball. Some of you might be upset to see Lonzo this high, but so far this season, I think it's safe to say Lonzo Ball's been a disappointment. Sure, his shooting percentages have gone up, but besides that, his stats and everything else have been down. And yeah, he's been sharing minutes with Rondo, but he's still the starting point guard for the Los Angeles Lakers, and a second overall pick playing at least 20 minutes a night, putting up single digits more often than not. The man just needs to get more involved in the game, and so far he hasn't been able to do that. 21, the Spurs with DeJounte Murray. Last season, Murray took over the starting spot of the San Antonio Spurs and made the all-defensive first team, and his defense is a huge part of why he ranks this high. Now, I expected him to come out and play much better on the offensive side in his third season in the league, but after he tore his ACL, it looks like we won't get to see how much he's improved until probably next season. Number 20, the Jazz with Ricky Rubio. Rubio's always been a pass first kind of guy, and he's never been the greatest scorer, and nothing's changed so far this season. In fact, this is one of his worst starts to a season, with him averaging career lows in pretty much everything besides assists. He's only shooting 31% from the field, 28% from three, and averaging 10 a game. So hopefully he can step things up at least a little bit. 19, the Pistons with Reggie Jackson. Jackson's a solid all around point guard but there's not too much to say about him. He's good at everything and has a high basketball IQ, but again, not great at any one thing. He's a guy that can consistently get you 15 a night, and even sometimes 20 or maybe 25. 18, the Nets with D'Angelo Russell. We're four years into D'Angelo's NBA career, and the highlight of it has still been exposing Nick Young. But seriously, we still haven't seen any major improvements in his game since his rookie season. He is still only 22, so he's got time, but I expected to see more out of the former second overall pick by now. Number 17, the Bucks with Eric Bledsoe. Bledsoe's biggest problem throughout his career has been consistency. You never know if he's going to put up 25 or 5 a night. Back when he was looking ready to be a breakout star on the Clippers behind CP3, it looked like he was ready to be traded and, and lead a team of his own. But little did we know that backup spot was probably the best situation for him. 16, the Hawks with Trey Young. Trey Young is averaging 18 points and 8 assists a game right now, and is off to a great start in his rookie season. But what keeps him from ranking any higher is the fact that he may only be scoring so much because, I mean, Atlanta's offense has to come from somewhere, and he's only been shooting 27% from 3 right now, which 
doesn't help his case. But I am still surprised he's been able to be so effective without being efficient from three. Number 15, the Mavericks with Dennis Smith Jr. Dennis Smith's stats haven't changed too much so far this season, but he's still looking a lot better on the court. Things look a lot easier for him and he looks a lot more comfortable. And I think a big part of that is from getting to run pick and rolls with DeAndre Jordan. And if he can keep getting better like he has been, he's going to rank a lot higher on this list in the future. With all the pieces that the Mavs are slowly bringing in, they should have a great team in a few years. 14. The Kings with De'Aaron Fox At least so far this season, Fox has shown a lot of improvement to his game. He's averaging career highs in every category and has stepped up as the leader of the Kings so far. I was skeptical of him after his rookie season in the league, but now it looks like he's got the ability to develop into one of the top point guards one day. Number 13, The Nuggets with Jamal Murray. Now if we're talking about someone who has a chance to become a top point guard one day, we're looking at Murray. He's already made huge progress in his three years in the league. He averaged 10 a game off the bench in his rookie season to now 18 a game so far this year. I'd say that I'd like to see him pass the ball more, seeing that he's never averaged over 4 assists a game, but with how the Nuggets have been playing as a team recently, I really can't complain. Number 12, The Timberwolves with Derrick Rose. I originally had Jeff Teague at this spot, but with how Derrick Rose has been playing while Teague's been out with an injury, it looks like he's going to be keeping that starting spot. He had that 50 point game on Halloween and has been averaging 19 points a game and looking like his old self again. The man's still only 29, so hopefully his body holds up this season and we can see the old Derrick Rose make a comeback. Number 11, The Heat with Goran Dragic. Now I don't think there's a chance that Dragic is going to be an all-star again this season, but the man's still playing great basketball. The Heat have had a lot of players step up so far this year, but Dragic has still been the one running their offense. He's a great playmaker, finisher around the rim, and he can shoot the ball. Miami's not the best team, but it's safe to say that without Dragic, they'd be a lot worse. Number 10, the Grizzlies with Mike Conley. Not too much to say about Conley. He's the same player he has been for years, but now he's on a terrible Grizzlies team. Number 9, the 76ers with Ben Simmons. Sure, Simmons is great, but I don't care what anyone says, the man isn't going to be able to be a star if he's not going to learn how to shoot the ball. It's his second season in the league, and he still hasn't shot an official three-pointer in his NBA career, aside from 11 full-court shots to end a quarter last season. If you go your entire rookie season without shooting a three, I don't see how it's possible that that isn't the only thing you work on over the offseason. He should have come back this year with at least an average three point shot, but he still hasn't even attempted one. And Philly already has enough problems with their player shots. Simmons can be one of the best in the NBA, but until he learns how to shoot, he'll probably just end up as an all star at best. Number 8, The Wizards with John Wall. Wall's definitely one of the most athletic and skilled point guards in the league, and personally he's having another great year, putting up nearly 20 and 10. But with how the Wizards have been playing recently, he does drop down on the list. Things could still turn around, but as of right now, they're not looking great with one of the worst records in the league, which has led a lot of people to believe it's time to blow that team up. Number 7, The Hornets with Kemba Walker. So far, Kemba's having one of the best years of his career, putting up 28, 6, and 4. A lot of people thought he should have been in my video for the most improved players, but I've got to see him keep this up for a little while longer to convince he's not just on a hot streak right now. Either way though, his play still isn't leading Charlotte to a great record, which has always been the Hornets' problem. Number 6, The Raptors with Kyle Lowry. Usually I'm not a fan of Kyle Lowry, but he's come out a new player this year. So far he's averaging 17 points and a career high 11 assists a game, and shooting almost 50% from the field. He deserves huge credit for being more of a facilitator for the Raptors, and teaming up with Kawhi Leonard was just what he needed to take his game to the next level. And both of these things are what have given the Raptors the best record in the league as of right now. Number 5, The Blazers with Damian Lillard. Personally, I may have put Dame in the top 3, but popular opinion amongst you guys and the Trailblazers playoff performance last year led me to ranking him at number 5. Once again, he's leading the Blazers to having one of the best records in the league by averaging 26, 5, and 5. But Portland still hasn't gotten him any new help this year, so we can probably expect to see them taken out in the first round of the playoffs again this season. Number 4, OKC with Russell Westbrook. Nothing new here, Russ is still the same near triple double athletic freak that he always is. 
Number three, the Rockets with Chris Paul. CP3 was going to drop down a little lower behind Westbrook or even Lillard because of Houston's slow start, but I've got faith that himself and the Rockets will get back on track and play better as the year goes on. Number two, the Celtics with Kyrie Irving. Kyrie was my second best point guard in the league last season too, and I'll keep him at this spot for now, but he did almost drop down behind Chris Paul because Afro Kyrie had a slow start to the season, but after that haircut, it looks like he quickly got back to his old ways. So he still ends up at number two. But if he can't help the Celtics get out of their struggle of having too many talented guys on one team that just haven't been able to find a rhythm, then he could probably drop down on the list in the future. And number one, the Warriors with Steph Curry. There's not even an argument here. Steph's right up there near the top of the list in the MVP race, and that's where he deserves to be. After starting the season out, averaging almost 30 a game on almost 50% from three. Now if he can keep this pace up, he has a chance to outperform his historic 2015 and 16 MVP season, which would be insane. But that wraps up the video. Make sure to leave your thoughts on the list and anything you agreed or disagreed with. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.